The unique transforming hull series from Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern has long been anticipated by space truckers since its original concept many years ago. That's because when it comes to price to load capacity, there's nothing better on the market. Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back to another episode of An Architect Reviews, where I will, as always, utilize my experience in the field of architecture to examine something in the digital realm. Today is the Hull A, a strange transforming bug-like ship that yet again sets a new standard for Star Citizen ship designs. And shortly I'll describe to you exactly where the design finds success and where it may fall short. One thing that definitely won't fall short though is the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN, which now not only helps to hide your IP from prying eyes, but goes a bit further with their new threat protection service, which works against intrusive ads, malware, trackers, and even malicious websites. I've already used them for years to get reliable access to IP-restricted websites while I work from abroad. I also use the app on my iPad to help me watch shows that just aren't available here in Taiwan for some reason. So if you're looking for a reliable VPN service and you want to help support the channel, head on over to nordvpn.com slash morphologist to get a huge discount on a two-year plan, plus get an additional month free. And hey, if this doesn't work for you, you can always get your money back with their 30-day money-back guarantee. If Star Citizen has an 18-wheeler analog, it's probably going to be the Hull series. Like its real-world counterpart, it's got a cab with living space and mechanicals, leaving the cargo to be attached via an outboard cargo system, kind of like an 18-wheel trailer. And this system is really what makes the Hull series special, as it can be deployed and retracted depending on whether or not the hauler is carrying cargo. And this, I imagine, is meant to make the ship just a little easier to handle without cargo and a bit more fuel efficient when traveling through atmosphere. And as you'll see by examining its competitors, efficiency really is key, because when it comes to cargo capacity versus price, the Hull A is unbeatable, which is likely to make the Hull A the go-to entry-level hauler in Star Citizen moving forward. But you're probably not here to listen to me rattle off numbers and comparisons, so let's shift back on over to the design of the exterior. The Hull A follows the design language long established by MISC with a bulky, bulbous form that is somewhat reminiscent of insects. This feeling is a bit stronger with its insect-like landing gear deployed. And like other entry ships in the MISC line, it comes stock with its metallic hull exposed. Personally, I love this look, and I would think twice about adding any kind of paint job that covers it up. Looking a bit closer, the details are unparalleled and exquisite. From the canicles of the transforming midsection down to the rivets that hold the hull together, CIG isn't stepping back an inch when it comes to quality expectations. The most exciting part of the exterior though has to be the transforming bit in the middle, the way everything folds apart. Second to that being probably the drive section, where they've got a really complicated and cool design for the thruster and its drive cone. One thing that definitely isn't impressive when it comes to function is the turret on the front of its hull, but its battleship-like form is still pretty cool looking. But now it's about time we took a look at the interior through its somewhat unique dual-purpose airlock that can double both as a surface entrance and as an actual docking ring. Entering the Hull A, we're greeted with what's effectively both an engine room and airlock for the ship. And when you think about the design of the ship, it's probably the best place to put an airlock, as it doesn't contain anything that would be critically damaged when exposed to the vacuum of space. Something that was unfortunately not thought about, I think, too much on the Freelancer, which has you enter directly on the hab area of the ship. Have any sleeping crewmates? Not anymore. The space is appropriately MISC, mechanical with curved and beveled edges. It feels like a space you might find on the Freelancer or on the Starfarer, so it's very appropriate when it comes to the design language. It's utilitarian yet polished. This interior space is incredibly detailed, and some of the stuff you might even miss if you didn't look closely enough, like the MISC logo being used for the grip pad on the floor. That is some clever detailing. 
There's also these great little MISC details, like the exposed piping and the checkerboard orange logos that you'll find plastered everywhere on bulkheads. And you can see they're actually starting to think about stuff like ventilation in this space, which is going to play into in the future decompression and compression of spaces. You can also see here that, keeping with the newer designs of ships, they're introducing lighting conditions on the interior of the ship, from a red alert, to a low light level, to a standard light level. I absolutely love that they're going into further detail with these interior spaces like this. It's not completely necessary for gameplay, but it makes the immersion factor all the more poignant. And also keeping with the new interior design standards of ships, they've introduced a suit locker here which will play into the future of personal inventory. In the future, there won't be an overall inventory that you can access by pressing I, it'll be more physicalized, so this is a place where you'll store spare EVA suits or perhaps even a suit made for harsh environments. One thing that's kind of funny that they added into this design is an emergency release button. If you don't know, a few of the earlier ships that had suit lockers didn't have this and so you could lock people inside of them, which was pretty hilarious. I guess they watched too many of our streams where we did that. Oh well, party poopers. Moving on to the HAB section of the ship, this space continues the consistent design style of MISC on the interior, but it adds a bit more of a domestic touch with some warmer lighting. It also boasts a nice grouping of utilities and features that the long-haul trucker is probably going to need, like food dispensaries, a nice sleeping area with a television and dimmable lights, a storage locker, and even a little kitchenette. And with CIG's rebalancing in 317, making food and water a little bit more important, I can see how this space may be desired by truckers who need to keep a supply of food on hand while on their journey. In terms of design, I can't fault much with it. It's got pretty much everything you could imagine that you might need. Cutlery, a fridge, a wash basin, and it's also got some very nice backlighting for the backsplash on the sink. A nice and subtly luxurious touch. And I think this thing right here might actually be a coffee maker. Too bad it doesn't work right now in game. Though this storage unit does work, and it's a place where you'd be able to directly store things in the future. The ship's bunk here is also worth investigation with its auxiliary lighting switches that allow you to access them directly from the sleeping area. This is something they've started introducing with newer ships, I think starting with Redeemer, and I love to see it here on this ship. I was disappointed not to find it on the raft, which felt like a little bit less of a finished ship than this one. I think this really has begun to set a standard for what I expect to see on gold standard ships going forward. Everything being functional and logical, stuff that you would expect to find in a nicely designed interior on a ship in our current modern age. And I also have to thank the designers here for finally making an actual locking, closing weapon locker. There are far too many ships in the game right now that are multi-crew ships that don't have locking weapon lockers. They're just exposed and able to be accessed by anybody on board, which is very concerning if you're boarded by a pirate or you have a guest on board that can just willy-nilly grab a weapon off the rack. And of course, any sort of tour wouldn't be complete without a look into the head. It's another appropriately MISC space, taking on the appearance of being well-built, bulky, able to take a beating, and at the same time being very hygienic looking. It's a space that seems like you could hose it down if there were accidents, which if you've had truck stop food is not at all unlikely. The space is also appropriately efficient with space, allowing you to double the shower area as a toilet area at the press of a button, though I question the location of the towel storage. Seems like it would get wet in the event you're using the shower. Just pop this button here under the shower and there you go. Just be sure not to back into that button when you're using it. Oh, and that toilet paper? I'm not quite sure I want to use that toilet paper. It looks like plastic. Come on, CIG. Unlike some of the other ships we've seen in recent releases, this also has a nice little medicine cabinet to store little bits and bobs. I love that they go to this level of detail. But now, let's finally take a peek at where all the action happens. Where you're going to spend most of your time as a long haul trucker. The bridge. Like many other ships in the MIC lineup, the Hull 8 bridge has a bulky and sturdy appearance, giving you a sense of well-built quality. Reinforcing this is a set of analog avionics switches, which I think is a great addition. I love analog switches even in today's cars. I think touchscreens can become very difficult to use, especially if you're not looking directly at them. 
One place that this ship does excel in over other MISC ships though is in its visibility. It's a bit closer maybe to the prospector's visibility versus something say like the freelancer which is quite limiting. However, one part of the design that isn't particularly successful is the positioning of these lower windows. While at first it appears that they could be usable while seated at the helm, you'll find that once you take a seat you actually can't see through them even with head tracking. So while the extra light they provide is welcomed, a bit more of a tactful positioning of those windows or the control console would have allowed me to have some better visibility when landing in rougher areas. That being said, there's very little to fault with this design, and I believe that the Hull A does set yet another standard for other ships to live up to. And so, despite some minor concerns, the Hull A gets my highest praise. It's once again a reminder of how these ships can be works of art in their own. I tip my hat to you, ship team. I look forward to your next project. But I'm interested to see what you guys think. Is this going to be your next hauler? Let me know down in the comments section below. I've been Morphologist, and don't forget, if you're looking for a VPN and you want to support the channel, head on over to nordvpn.com morphologist to get that two-year deal. See you in the next one.